Good morning. How are you this morning? My name's Zinda. I'm a complex trauma consultant and I'm currently in beautiful Brisbane, Australia, where for the first time in weeks it's absolutely pouring rain and we love it because it takes away the humidity. How's everyone in the Northern Hemisphere where it's freezing? Oh my goodness, your stories. Oh, crikey, in our heat, you are so cold. Oh, wow. Anyhow, welcome. This morning, I want to talk to you about a bottle, a book, and a rice pack, and what they mean for us with complex trauma, and how we can use them practically. Good morning, Charlene. It's great to see you. I hope you're doing well. So, when we have complex trauma, and our brain absolutely goes offline, which means that we that you know, the chemicals or chemistry and the biology and everything that's happening in our brain, our brain goes offline. We have no control over order. Um, Our prefrontal cortex isn't connected to the amygdala and hippocampus and everything in the limbic system is absolutely the adrenaline and cortisol is left for the furthest reaches of our body. And so we can't actually put order in anything. We're having a panic attack and we can barely breathe. And it's like, oh my goodness, the overwhelm is phenomenal and emotional dysregulation is already happening. Okay? Well, it actually happens before we go right offline. So what I've found is there's a couple of things that are really, really helpful for when our brain goes offline and we can't get back into or off the hyper or hypo vigilance, all right? So one of the first things, now before I show you these things, I want you to remember this. You can't just pick them up in the middle of an anxiety attack or any other effect that's happening for you in our body. We have to pre-practice what's happening. Now we do that for two reasons. One, because we've already training our brain to have a different response. So in in order to train our brain to have a different response, we want to practice in advance. So the grounding information that I put in group yesterday, oh, I think it was the day before, my apologies, I said put it on your phone so that you can remember to do it. But then one lady said, and rightly so, how does she remember to do it in the middle of... Um, an anxiety attack and I said well what you do is you practice in advance so you get up every morning and every night and you do the grounding and then when you're having an anxiety attack you've already got it there to do okay so these things that I'm going to show you this morning are the same principle so if you get up and do the morning and you do the night before you go to bed and you know throw in lunchtime if you really want to as well because the more you do it It's consistency, which is everything that we do to travel through recovery and become well, we need to do consistently. So if we do these things that I'm showing you today, it's going to create habits, one, that your brain already knows, so that when you're having anxiety, it doesn't trigger it into more anxiety because it's a new thing. And two, it begins to create the new neural pathways. And when we do that, okay, we are then able to work with when we are triggered and so that the the impact of the trigger, rather than taking us right offline, we it actually becomes less and less and less and less. So we're not going into a full-blown uh, anxiety attack and then we're offline for ages, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is, I don't care what size bottle you've got, You can make it any size that is comfortable to you. But what we want to do is we're we're not working with the emotions. We're working with the brain and the body. So it's our brain and our body that we have to get to change its responses when we're triggered. So while we're not triggered, we're going to do things with our body and our brain. We're going to make our brain focus on muscle movement in order that it does begin to create a new neural pathway. Now, if I was to sit here and say to you, just do this, it's pointless, 
I can tell you that because it's easy to do and it's like, oh, wow. So what you want to do is whether you stand up or sit down, it doesn't matter, whatever's comfortable to you. You want to actually move it in an in a way that is not a common movement to you, okay? So when you do things like this and do it with both arms, one arm, two bottles, one bottle, it doesn't matter. What, matter, what matters is that you do it differently because what you're doing is your brain is going to have to focus on a very different movement than you're used to. So when we, you know, if you extend your arm and you just, and you move it back like that, that's not a common everyday movement. And, if, and like I can already feel, it's like you feel the energy shifting around in your body because your brain has to go, oh, I've got to record that, okay? Our brain goes, right, oh, what's that? Different. I have to focus on creating a new order in my brain which creates the new neural pathway. In its, that's in its most simplest form and it works, okay? So if you put your arm out, if you've got your bottle, put your arm out and move your arm back, right? Because this is not a common movement at all. And if you just relax and you feel your breath, then you begin to realize that your brain does actually have to focus on which muscles it's got to move to make an uncommon movement, okay? Now, if you did that for 30 seconds with each arm each day, morning and night, you are going to teach your brain, one, it's safe to make a different mu muscle movements, all right? And you're also going to teach your brain that it needs to create a new neural pathway in order, and that it's safe to do that, okay? It's safe to do something new. And we do have to teach our brain that it is safe to do something new, all right? Because sometimes what can trigger us is we go, oh yeah, I want to go and do that and it's something we haven't done before. And next thing you know, without us even thinking about it, our brain will get triggered, okay? The fear response happens because that's how our brain was developed in childhood. And rather than thinking this is manageable, we go, it goes straight into a fear response without us even knowing. So what we want to do is teach our brain that it's okay to do something different and whilst I'm, whilst I'm in the comfort of my own home and that way I'm going to be able to recognise when I do feel uncomfortable so then I know that my brain's been triggered and I'm going to be able to sit here and breathe through it. So 30 seconds on each arm each day in a different movement. So think of an, another different movement. Um, we could put our arms out and then if we just dropped our wrist down, then our brain, think of all the muscles from here to there that our brain has to focus on just by moving our wrist up and down, okay? And it does work. You are creating new muscle memories. Now, next one. I should Actually, I just need a sip of water. Sorry, my sinus is going nuts this morning. And if you look in the corner of my... Oh, it looks like someone punched me, but they didn't. It's just me here. <laughs> and because uh, I've been scratching my eyes out from the hay fever, but it happens this time of year. Okay. And if you get used to uh, the size and how heavy that bottle is, you can make it bigger if you want. Or you can use both hands and move it. Okay. Even if you just move your wrist. You're doing something that you don't normally do. Be inventive. Be creative. Come up with something different. And if you've got kids, oh my goodness, or grandkids even, you don't have to use a bottle, but you could use a ball and throw it back and forward or kick a ball back and forward, even for one minute a day, morning, night with your kids or your grandkids. One, they're going to love the attention, but two, you are going to teach your brain that it's okay to move muscles again, okay? Now the book. The book was really important for me. When I uh, was six years ago, I first came across the concept and the understanding uh, that science knew that our optimal breathing rate was five seconds in and five seconds out. 
So I use this technique that I'm going to show you to begin to build an awareness of when I was trying to sleep of my body, to build an awareness of my breathing because one of the things that we do straight out of habit is hold our breath, okay? And my jaw used to be clenched tight. My finger, my fingers, my whole hand was tight like that and I used to carry it around like that and didn't even know. And same with my toes. And I can tell you now this works six years later because now I just stretch my hands and I love stretching them and feeling how far I can. And the same with my feet. If you ever sit down, put your feet up and just stretch your feet out like that and stretch them as far as the muscles can go, it actually feels really good to stretch them. Uh, more oxygen will get in and flow. However, when I first started, I used to use a book. Now, I just grabbed any one off the bookshelf at the moment. And I used to, so I'd lie in bed and choose a weight that you can just notice. So it doesn't have to be heavy because you're going to be doing this for one minute every night. What you want to create is when your eyes are shut is an awareness of the weight. And as you create the awareness of the weight on your chest or even on your stomach, I used to use my chest, that was really important uh, for me to feel it there. But on, you could use it on your stomach as well. And as you take the breath in for five seconds and out for five seconds, you want your brain to focus on how the weight feels, okay? Because then you're going to be in your prefrontal cortex and you're going to be able to go, right, in order to feel the weight on my chest, I have to keep the order going in, in my prefrontal cortex of up and down for five seconds and I want to do the in and out six times and that's one minute, okay? Now, the more that you do this, you'll actually be able to last longer than one minute comfortably. Morning, Josephine. And as you do that, what happens again is you're creating new neural pathways, you're creating new muscle memories, you're increasing the oxygen into your system, which both your body and brain need, and you're teaching your brain that you're safe to do a new exercise and it will begin to feel comfortable. So what happens is when we get to living on hypo or hypervigilance is that our body and brain get into this rut, okay? This is the simplest way we can understand it. Our body and brain get into a rut where they're used to just staying in the same state repeatedly. So we want to do gentle things that can begin to change that up in a safe environment and that way we not only does it meet our long-term beliefs of having to control our outer environment to be safe it also builds an inner awareness of safety as well and we need both okay when we first start in recovery we need both now the rice pack i actually had these made up a friend of mine sews and she's brilliant. Now, initially I had these made up. They're actually, you see how it's the size of that? And the inside, you don't have to do this at all. But what she did was sew an inner, okay? This one's red, the other one's white. And the rice is all in there. You can heat these up, so it'd be brilliant if you're in um, Northern Hemisphere at the moment where it's cold but you don't need it heated. Now, if you have a bag of rice, it'll do the same thing, okay? Now, I bought material that when you touch it, okay, it's sensory. So it's raised here, and obviously it goes up and down. Now, if you sit watching TV and have one of these on your lap, um, not one of these in particular, you can use a plain bag of rice because the rice is all lumpy. But I use these because I had them for sale and the materials, you know, going a different way on the other side. 
if you have this in your lap and you run your fingers over it, even while you're watching a movie, it is very calming, okay? And it will begin to help you regulate your system. It will help you get used to a sensory, a sensation with your senses that feels really good and comfortable. I have used these instead of a book in the beginning, but I found them to be a bit too heavy for me. But if you get a get some rice and just sew up a little satchel, or actually I just had another thought too. Uh, I haven't got one with me, but you know you can get the um, what do we call them here? The Glad press seal bags, okay? You could just put a bit of rice in that and sit there and rub your fingers over it and it's going to do the same thing. You are creating new sensory input just even while you're watching TV, okay? And you could take that with you when you're out and if you felt yourself becoming dysregulated, you could just rub your fingers over it, Okay? The other thing you can do for sensory input when you're sitting at home or for when you go out is something to smell. Essential oils, brilliant. And lavender, a combo of lavender, chamomile and marjoram actually are really good under the nose to help you sleep at night as well. I use them and because of the smell, it helps relax the set, your nervous system, Okay. So I just wanted to share these things with you today and this, if you, uh, probably have to be about half the size, but if you know anyone who sews and you made one half the size, you can still put it on you and it still is a sensory input and you're creating a habit. So, so even if you walked around like this and look, you can buy these, but mine are rice, but you can buy wheat packs, okay, and they'll do the same thing. And you just want to spend the time to create in your brain, in your body, a new sensory input that feels really, really comfortable to you. Okay? Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel welcome to hit me up below. Please feel welcome to ask for other uh, sensory inputs because it's really important, like I said in the beginning, that we do this before we go into dysregulation or into hyper or hyper arousal so that we've already got something that feels really good to us and we can reconnect with that, which helps our brain get back into reconnecting a lot quicker. Okay, that's it for this morning and I'll be back on Wednesday and on Wednesday we're going to talk about a different way of looking at self-care. Okay, very different to what the norm is and I know that it will help you along your way as well. Thanks for joining in. I love you all and I appreciate you all. Remember, we're the turtles. We take it slowly because the turtle won the race. Blessings and dreams and I'll see you Wednesday morning. Bye for now.